Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is expected to officially announce his 2024 run for the Oval Office. But as he prepares to pitch his Make America Florida platform to a larger audience, his relentless attacks on education and his inane feud with Disney is reaching new limits ultimately at the expense of Floridians and the Florida economy. Disney is now pulling the plug on a billion dollar development that would have created more than 2,000 jobs in the region. And as that feud keeps escalating, DeSantis used the new College of Florida in Sarasota as a backdrop to sign three new bills that gut funding for diversity, equity, and inclusion programs in Florida's public universities. That move has some new college students taking matters into their own hands. The graduating class created what they called an alternative commencement in protest of DeSantis's hostile takeover of their school. Civil rights attorney and activist Maya Wiley didn't hold back when delivering the event's keynote address. You have had to be strong in the face of a few who would tell you that you can't read what you want to read, that you can't speak what you want to speak, that you should get in line with an ideology that is not yours and call that, call that freedom. Civil rights attorney, college professor, and president and CEO of the Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights, Maya Wiley, joins me on set this morning. I would like to say you're also my friend, too, so I'm honored for you to be here. Maya, anybody listening to your commencement address would have been inspired, but it was the alternative commencement at the new college. What was the energy like when you were there on Thursday? Well, I have to say, and this is such an important thing to note about who the new college is, who their students are, who their faculty are. It was simply joyous. And I think that's what they wanted. They wanted to show, you know, we're just people who care about each other, that are in a community that's a learning community. Uh, and they were determined, determined to celebrate themselves in the face of students who have been called names by trustees appointed by the governor, names, right? People, adults who are supposed to demonstrate to them that they are cared for and that their ability to be who they are is valued, have been called druggies, have been called weirdos by a sitting trustee. So their whole goal was to be who they are in their own commencement proceeding and that's exactly what they did. So for people to understand there was a quote official commencement that was going on that had that board of trustees that's been installed by DeSantis, the administration, etc. And then you had that parallel alternative commencement that you were speaking at. So there wasn't any sense of bitterness, resentment, anger in that alternative commencement. They were actually joyous and happy to have this opportunity to do so. Well, they were insistent that they have joy in their resistance. They were very very clear that they were resisting the attack on their ability to have the educational freedom they wanted, their, the attack on their ability to be who they are. Remember, a lot of these students are LGBTQ students. There were trans students in that audience and their parents. So it is not that they were being silent in the face of feeling attacked for being a warm, inclusive, inviting educational place. It's that they insisted that they were not going to show up with anger, but with joy for being in community with one another. And that was such its own compelling, I think, counterpoint to the next day. So let's both of us take a quick listen to what Governor DeSantis said earlier this week about students who actually want to pursue DEI programs. Let's take a listen. Bill is saying is, you know, some of these niche subjects like critical race theory, other types of DEI infused uh, courses and majors, um, Florida's getting out of that game. Um, if you want to do things like uh, gender ideology, uh, go to Berkeley. Go to some of these other places. That's fine. My, you're a professor. My father, my late father, was a college professor for decades. Brain drain is a very real threat in the state of Florida. But that actually would involve people coming to Florida, learning, and then leaving. But now you got people like DeSantis saying, don't even come here. We're going to warn you off of even coming here. Go somewhere else. I mean, it's 
it's so anger. It makes me angry to listen to the narrow mindedness that a state's governor is promoting in terms of an education. Well, this is you're absolutely right about the brain drain. This is worse, though, than that. Much worse, because what DeSantis is doing in that statement is taking an ideological position, not an academic one, an ideological position that says, if you're learning gender studies, if you're learning African-American studies, if you have a program in a college that says, we're going to work on ensuring that we're a diverse place, that all our voices and experiences are heard and respected, and call that off limits in a publicly funded institution, one that he is trying to model on a private Christian school in Michigan. What he is really saying is, I'm going to pretend that this is not ideological, but actually it is. It is actually an attack on freedom of education. It is an attack that says we will tell faculty members that they can't teach despite their training and education in the ways they think fits the mission of the institution. And we will threaten their very careers if they do. So that's not freedom. You always inspire. So, Maya, what were your parting words during this alternative commencement to these students to give them hope, to tell them that there are people like you that are allies that are not maybe in their backyards, but in other places that are supporting them? Two things. I reminded them that every single expansion of civil rights, of democracy that we've had in this country has required a student movement and that what they're doing is emulating that history. And the second was, I quoted Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who the night before his assassination for standing up for workers, for standing up for racial justice in Memphis, Tennessee, when he said, it is only in darkness that you can see the stars. And I called them the stars in our darkness and thanked them for shining the light.